Hello and welcome to this tutorial on... Oh, wait a minute, this is YouTube. What's up guys? Welcome to this tutorial on how to create a grad filter effect in Sony Movie Studio and so hopefully keep some great skies in your movies. Now for this I'll be using Movie Studio Platinum. That's the mid-range consumer version rather than the Vegas Pro version. So around £60 UK, $90 US rather than say £300, $500. It's version 13 I'm using here, but I know it all works on version 12 as well. And of course, the Vegas Pro version will do all this and much more. I'll be using no filter packs, no special plugins or codecs, all just basic vanilla, out-of-the-box Movie Studio Platinum. So in the last couple of months, I've been taking the chance to get some nice winter shots. I've been using a quadcopter, a DJI Phantom 2 with a GoPro on the gimbal. Here, at 56 degrees north latitude, the days are short and the sun is often very low in the sky. And this can create some nice colour and great contrast, but also real challenges for the camera. The ground is often in shadow and so too dark, or the sky is too light. And if there's snow and the sky is overcast, then everything can look really grey and washed out. A landscape still photographer might use a neutral density graduated filter, and the purpose there is to darken sky so the highlights aren't blown and you get the best chance for some real detail. We don't have that graduated filter, so what can we do in post-production? Well, the answer is quite a lot. It's just a pity I figured most of this tutorial out after uploading most of my winter movies. So let's start with this clip. We just had a big hour-long snow shower, it's mid-February and we're in the last 30 minutes of daylight. The ground is dark, despite the snow, and the sky has lost some of its highlights already, although it looks like a great sunset. So, whatever we do when we brighten the ground, we don't want to lose any more detail in that sky. Since I was there, I know the whole scene should look much brighter, so let's try and get it looking a bit more like it looked in real life. So, what can we do? Well, my favourite effect is levels. It lets you brighten up a scene and play a bit with the contrast pretty well. So on the video effects tab here we've got levels and we'll drag it down onto the clip. And that opens up this window with five sliders. Now typically I use the top two, the input start and the input end and the gamma. I don't use these two here, the output start and the output end. So top two and the bottom one. Now the top one, input start, lets you move the black points so it will make dark areas darker to black and the input end will do the same for light areas and moving them to white. So if we want to make that snow on the ground and the ground area look brighter then we'll move that slider there to the left. We can also do something with gamma which uh, brightens up shadow areas but it also reduces overall contrast. But if you have a reasonably well exposed and evenly exposed scene, some kind of combination of these sliders should get you the effect that you want. But you can see with what we have here, that if we get the foreground maybe about right, that sky area has lost all its detail, and that nice sunset has disappeared. So, is there a way that we can get the foreground nice and bright while retaining the detail in the sky? And maybe even making that a little bit darker. So if we could get the sky looking like it does here, while having the foreground looking like it does here. Is it possible? Yes it is. Okay, so we've returned the clip now to its natural state with no effects, so we can see the whole process. Uh, what we're going to do is separately apply the effects we want to two versions of the clip, and then blend them together, so that we get the best of both worlds. Uh, we can lighten up the ground, and leave the sky as is, or perhaps even darken it to get a more dramatic effect. We're going to create a copy of the clip, and put it on a layer above, and you can see here we have the ground layer shown. We're going to put it on the sky layer and then we're going to make parts of that sky layer transparent to show through the lighting effects that we put on the ground layer underneath. And how do we make parts of the sky layer transparent? We do it with a mat. So 
Let's copy first of all. And that now gives us a copy of the ground layer, which becomes the sky layer. They are identical. If we switch off the sky layer, then there is no difference. Now what we want to do is on this layer here, which I've called the grad mat, we're going to go to media generators and color gradient. And we're going to choose a linear black to transparent. And this will be our mat. The mat as shown here is solid and opaque to the left. And you see that it's blackening everything out here and it's transparent to the right. And you see it's clear here on the right. So first thing we want to do is we need to turn it around and you'll see the two white dots. They're numbered one and two. These are the control points and these determine where it starts to change from solid black or solid opaque to a gradient and where it changes from the gradient to solid transparent. And you can see it better if I drag this down here. So you can see it's absolutely black opaque above one, then it starts to transition to clear transparent to two, and then it's completely transparent from two down. And the relative positions of these is controlled by dragging around those control points. Now, so that's the, the basic shape of the mat. Nothing's happened as yet, it's just opaque uh, area on top of the frame. So we'll close that down and we need to do three steps in order to make this mat affect how this layer allows the picture through from underneath from the ground. Remember we want to make part of the sky layer transparent so we can see the ground from the ground layer show through. Three things. First thing, in the sky layer we make it a compositing child of the mat and that makes these two layers work together as a pair. Next thing, we change the compositing mode of the matte layer to be multiply mask. And finally, we tell this layer that it is to be treated as a matte by applying an effect to it. And we apply the mask generator to that, like that. And you see suddenly we get an effect here and we go to type and we change it to alpha and what that means is that the mat will work and it will produce a transparency in the layer underneath based on the transparency as itself so that's why i like to choose a, um, a, a black to transparent rather than a black to white because if it's transparent in the mat then it means it will make the layer underneath transparent so let's kick off by, we will now apply levels to the ground layer. And what we're hoping is, if we brighten up the ground here, it doesn't affect the sky. So here we go. And that looks pretty good. So that has brightened it up and it hasn't made a lot of effect on the sky. In fact, we can even darken down that a bit. So I didn't notice anything happening to the sky at all. Now let's also apply levels to the sky layer. If they're genuinely independent, then we should be able to darken down the sky and we'll move the gamma down. Yeah, there we go. And that's great. So they now appear to be working completely independently. We can have the ground lighter and the sky darker. Now, let's go back to the mat and we can just see the levels of control we have when we click on that generated media button and we can start playing around with the control points to see a difference in effect we get by moving them around and watch what happens on the right. So this makes the dark part of the sky move down and we can move it sideways if we wanted and we can move two up so depending on where you have one and two, you get a, a more rapid or, or a less rapid change between transparent and black. 
uh, and it also determines obviously where the cut comes between the two layers so if we drag two down the bottom and one down like that then you'll see that the whole frame goes dark and if we move up to the top then you can get the lightning effect running right up so that's almost like working like a shutter determining where the cut is between the top layer and the bottom layer the more transparent you have the more of the bottom layer shown through for most things I think you probably want it around about here but it depends where your sky is on the frame now you'll also see if we move the control point and watch here you'll see that there's quite a sharp line shows up especially the closer you get one and two together whoops that's another thing that happens that starts to flip <laughs> okay so the closer you get them together the harder they are to control but also you'll see quite a harsh line there so if you want to make that less obvious then what we can do is we can add a blur filter to there so we can add Gaussian blur onto that mat make it a bit fuzzy push those sliders out there and now if we go back here and we move this around you're not seeing quite the same level of harshness and that's probably a useful thing to do so there we go now I think uh, that looks quite nice it certainly brings out a lot more colour um, and a lot more definition and we've saved the sky and we've got a nice bright foreground as well let's do one more and we'll go over to this uh, snowy scene here this is all pretty grey, um, obviously the snow should be reasonably white so we'll do the same things again, we don't need to do so much because we've already got the layers in place and we've got the right modes in place so it's just a case of copying and then pasting and that's just overlaid there and we'll put that there and then we'll get a mat, we'll just copy this mat here to make it a little quicker And we said there to create a new copy. If we link it to the previous one, then if we change the properties of one of these mats, it will change all the others. So it's completely independent. So let's see if we... Do we want to change? Yes, I think we'll move this sky down a little bit. And we'll have a slightly quicker change. Okay go for that and then we'll apply some levels again so we'll brighten up the ground because it's snow it should be white there we go it's maybe a bit too much don't want to lose that and we'll darken it down so that the fence posts are a little darker and then we'll apply some levels also to the sky portion now there's a good bit of grey mid grey there but I think we can make them a little darker so we'll shut down the gamma that looks nice and we'll make that input. Oh yes, that's good. So there, that's pretty dramatic. And there we go. That's good. So that bit of darkness on the ground helps to highlight the grass showing through the snow, the fence posts, and on the sky gives us a nice black sky against the white snow. So thank you for watching and I uh, hope that's been useful.